What's up everybody? This is Trigger on the stack. I get to make that joke every time now. And thank you for tuning in to another EDH slash Commander gameplay video. I hope you enjoy the video for today. Uh, I, I, it has all, 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 a lot of fun players and a lot of fun plays and twists and turns and drama. There's drama in this video, kind of surprising. As well as drama in the studio right now, since I'm recording up here as I left Adrian in the basement alone with the bat. We have a bat, apparently. His name's Tommy. He chirps a lot. Uh... With that said, as always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash mtgthestack. Who's today's patron, Tommy? You're right, it is Oren. Good job. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. In today's game, we have Calvin, Rocking Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. His Golos deck is a five color Planeswalker deck that aims to resolve threatening Planeswalkers and cast efficient board wipes to accumulate enough advantage so that one of his many walkers can overrun the game. His opening hand includes a Savai Triome, Overgrown Tomb, Steam Vents, Othanisa, Garuk Wildspeaker, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, and Nicobolus, Dragon God. After that, we have Guy, who's pushing out his Greven Predator Captain deck. His Greven deck is about casting his commander through a lot of self-inflicted pain so that Greven can come out swinging for lethal. His opening hand includes a Hall of the Bandit Lord, Swamp, Graven Cairns, Shizo Death Storehouse, Swiftfoot Boots, Rush of Vitality, and Silent Arbiter. After that, Adrian is jamming Gavi, Nest Warden, an old favorite of the channel, designed to abuse cycling effects from across Magic's history, accumulate advantage, and close the game out with weird shenanigans. His opening hand includes an Irrigated Farmland, Desert of the True, Azoria Signet, Fluctuator, Nimble Obstructionist, Sweltering Suns, and Akroma's Vengeance. And finally, Aiden is slamming Ruhan of the Famari, a straightforward Jeskai aggressive deck all about suiting up and turning sideways his commander. His opening hand includes a Rogrin Triome, Steam Vents, Shivan Reef, Champion's Helm, Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Body and Mind, and Tiana Ship's Caretaker. Why? No, I have a good, I have a new and improved way to decide turn. you have turn. to pass everything through me. This is, no, is under the camera. This is a new and improved way to see who goes first. I didn't grab your Pokemon card. I didn't grab. Grab your Pokemon card. Three, two, one. Huzzah! Fuck. Now you won't believe me. All right, do your dice. Because it was going to be a different Pokemon. This is not a Pokemon TCG. Yes, it can be! It's not. Yes, it can. Look at the bird! You got to beat eight to go first. Or let him do that again. TCG is a trigger better. Yeah. So close. Round one, Calvin won the die roll, so he'll open the game by shocking in an overgrown tomb so he can cast Oath of Nisa. He'll then reveal Command Tower from the top of his library and pass the turn. Guy's gonna untap, draw, drop a Hall of the Bandit Lord tap, Fuck. then pass the turn. And then Adrian's gonna drop an Irrigated Farmland tapped, passing the turn. Then Aiden closes the round out with a Ragrim Trion tapped, passing the turn. Round two, Calvin will untap, draw, drop a Savai Trium tapped, then pass the turn. Then Guy's gonna untap, draw, drop a basic swamp, then pass the turn. Adrian's gonna untap, draw, drop a basic island, then he's gonna cast an Azoria Signet, ending his turn. And then Aiden's gonna untap, draw, drop a Shivan Reef, then cast Swiftfoot Boots, ending his turn. Round three, Calvin's gonna untap, draw, drop a Steam Vents tap, then pass the turn. Guy's gonna untap, draw, drop Graven Cairns, and then he's gonna cast a Swiftfoot Boots, passing the turn. Adrian will untap, draw, drops Desert of the True, tap. Then he's going to tap two in order to cast Fluctuator, passing the turn. Then Aiden's going to untap, draw. Is that the sound the cycling's going to make? That's the sound of Adrian. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up! <laughs> Aiden's gonna drop a basic planes, and then he's gonna tap two in order to cast a Relic Seeker. Relic Seeker resolves. Oh shit. Resolves. Combat. Resolve! Aiden will throw his Relic Seeker at Guy, dealing two damage to him and triggering Relic Seeker's renowned ability, searching his library for an artifact equipment and adding it to his hand. 
you know what you're in the market for, Aiden? I think I want this. Lightning groups. Oh, you think you want any instant resource in your deck? I'd agree. Round four, Calvin will untap, draw, he'll drop a command tower, then he's gonna tap out to cast Garuk Wildspeaker. It's the thing. Here is stuff. Pass. Guy's gonna untap, draw, drop a basic swamp, then he's gonna tap out, losing three life to the Hall of the Bandit Lord, in order to cast- Play Silent Arbiter. Get that fucking Garrick. Uh, I don't wanna, what? I will you attack that Garrick if I attack that Garrick? Yeah. Attack the Garrick. Mm -hmm. I think a good boy. Good to go. no, fuck off. Adrian will psycho hieroglyphic illumination on Guy's end step, and then Guy will pass the turn. After shedding many tears over his lack of red mana, Adrian's gonna drop a Ragrim Trion tapped, and then he's gonna pass the turn. Aiden's gonna untap, draw, then he's gonna tap one in order to cast Crying Blade. Listen, man. I'm more like a crying blade. I don't know, I never read the anime. I'm gonna equip to him. Zolves. What's that thing do? Also, keep your fucking shit neat, bro. We need to be able to see what's I on your shit. Can't hit Garrick now. You can't hit Garrick now? Yeah. Why? Because I'd like to make some. Aiden's then going to attack Guy with his Relic Seeker, dealing 4 damage and creating a treasure token off the Prime Blade. If I attack this, will you attack it? Yeah. Hit you instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept my crimes. No, I, bitch, I they're not even crimes. Blade. They're just toddler moves. Hmm. Well, it depends on if he misses a land drop or not. I think there's a land drop right here. Oh, God. Well, that's really unfortunate. Untap. Well, fuck I'll, you. I'll keep <laughs> yeah, that was actually a bad play. I think I'm fine. You, yeah, we always say that until we let Calvin accelerate into eight mana on turn five. For no reason. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, well, you see, I'm gonna add a blue and a white. Doesn't actually matter. But then I'm gonna tick up. I have a response to you ticking it up. Target, for, target. For two less, I'll cycle number of obstructionists and stifle the ability. Okay. I will draw a card, you may proceed. Cool. Calvin will use the rest of his mana in order to cast a Smothering Tithe, passing the turn. Guy's gonna untap, draw. Okay. After paying the Smothering Tithe, he's gonna drop an Ancient Tomb, then Guy's gonna pay one to equip the Swiftfoot Boots to his Silent Arbiter, passing the turn. Pass. You're not gonna pressure Walker? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fair. I'm gonna cycle for one mana for its reduced cost of two sweltering sums. I will pay. Yeah. Adrian's gonna untap. Move to upkeep, then think. I right, are you gonna pay for your taxes? No. Right, Unless I draw land. Why do we play magic with you? Fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I will not pay. I'm gonna play Glacial Fortress. I'm gonna hard cast a Chroma's Vengeance. Ah. Destroy our artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. I'll pass the turn. After untapping, Aiden's gonna drop a basic mountain. Then he's gonna cast his commander, Ruhan of the Famari, passing the turn. Round six, Calvin will un, tap, draw, then he's going to rinse and repeat, tapping his command tower and Savai Triome, adding a blue and a white to his mana pool, ticking up Garuk, untapping his lands, and then tap his mana beside his command tower in order to cast Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I added so much I don't wanna fucking hear it. mana. It sucks I to suck. I cut the hand with three Kill lands. Kill that with Grevin, baby. You know what to do. I cut the hand with three lands. I don't. And I played the oath, and I got a land. Yeah. So a like, I always hear the reasons for why it happened. I've literally done nothing wrong. No. <laughs> Move. Bad gameplay decision. Other than that, you're good. Elaborate. The bad gameplay decision. Oh, you'll learn eventually. Trial and error. For all you Calvin. I know. Combat. There's nothing you can do about it either, so you should just move to combat. I move to combat. <laughs> <laughs> Move to end step. I'm gonna yeah. untap two lands. There you got it. Good to go? Yeah. Alright, you're okay. Go. Guy's gonna untap, draw. After dropping a basic swamp, Guy's gonna tap five mana, losing five life to the ancient tomb and the Hall of the Bandit Lord in order to cast his commander, Grevin. With Hall of the Bandit Lord's haste, Guy's gonna swing Grevin at Teferi, threatening lethal to it. But then Calvin's gonna respond by casting Soul Shatter, causing Guy and Aiden to sacrifice the commanders. Guy has no further actions, so he passes the turn. Adrian's gonna untap, draw, then he's gonna drop a Hall of Heliod's Generosity before tapping five mana in order to cast his commander, Gavi. 
he is then going to use Gavi to cycle for free his shredded sails, drawing a card and triggering Gavi, making a creature token. He's then going to pass the turn. Aiden's going to untap, draw, cast Tiana's ship's caretaker. Then he's going to drop a Temple of Enlightenment, scrying one to the top of his library, ending his turn. Calvin's going to untap, draw, make his lands look real pretty. Then he's going to tick up Teferi, drawing a card. Cast Mana Crypt, then add two mana to his mana pool, tick up his Garoop to untap those two lands. Then he's going to tap one more land and the Mana Crypt in order to cast Golos, his commander. Golos will enter the battlefield and he'll search his library for an Ancient Tomb, putting it into play tapped. He'll then spend the rest of his mana to cast Oko, Thief of Crowns, ticking it up, targeting Gavi, trying to turn it into a 3-3 vanilla elk. In response, Adrian will cycle for free Eternal Dragon, searching his library for a Sacred Foundry and adding it to his hand, and then the Oko ability will resolve, turning the Gavi into an elk. Calum will move to end step, untapping his Command Tower and Savai Triome, and then he'll pass the turn. Guy's gonna untap, draw, He'll drop a Shizo's Death Storehouse onto the battlefield, and then he's going to tap out a bunch of mana, losing 5 life again to the Ancient Tomb and Hall of the Bandit Lord in order to cast Greven again. He'll then move into combat again, this time swinging it at the Oko, Thief of Crowns, which Calvin will let happen, killing the Oko. Guy will then end his turn. Adrian's going to untap, draw, he's going to shock in his Sacred Foundry, then he's going to move to combat, attacking Teferi with his 3-3 Elk. Talon will opt to block it with Golos, killing the Elk, putting Gavi back into the command zone, and putting 3 damage onto the Golos. Adrian will then move to his second main phase, and he's going to cast Lightning Rift. He will then cast a Wall of Omens, triggering it, drawing a card, and then he's going to cycle Desert of the Mindful, triggering Lightning Rift, which he will pay the mana for, dealing 2 more damage to Golos, killing it. Adrian will then pass the turn. Iron's going to untap, draw, then he's going to tap 3 mana in order to cast Danitha Capuchin Paragon, then tap 2 mana to cast Champion's Helm at a reduced cost, then tap 1 mana to equip it to Tiana. He'll then move to combat and swing at Teferi for 5 damage, knocking it down to 1. This will end Aiden's turn. Round 8, Calvin's going to untap, lose his mana crypt trigger, draw a card. Then Calvin's going to play a Misty Rainforest before ticking up his Teferi in order to draw a card. He'll then crack the Misty Rainforest, find a basic island, and put it into play. He will then tap to cast Supreme Verdict, destroying everyone else's creatures. And then Calvin will tick up Garuk, untap two lands, then he's going to tap four in order to cast a Spark Double, entering the battlefield as a copy of Teferi, which he will then tick up in order to draw another card. He moves to end step, Teferi and Teferi will untap his lands, and he passes the turn. Guy's then going to untap, draw, then he's going to cast Pyroblast, targeting the Spark Double to destroy it. This will resolve, and then Guy will pass the turn. Adrian's going to untap, draw, then he's going to cycle Cloud of Fairies, triggering Lightning Rift, and paying the mana in order to deal 2 damage to the Teferi, destroying it. He is then going to cast Talisman of Creativity before passing the turn. Aiden's going to untap, draw, Aiden then is going to play an Arcane Lighthouse before tapping out most of his mana to recast Ruhan of the Famari. He will then pay his last mana to try and equip Champion Helm, but then Calvin will respond by tapping one in order to cast Swords to Plowshare, targeting and exiling the Ruhan. Aiden will rezone it and then pass the turn. But not before Adrian cycles Secluded Step, paying an additional mana for the Lightning Rift in order to do two damage to the Garuk. Then Aiden's turn will end. Calvin's going to untap, draw, then remember his mana crypt trigger, losing 3 life in the process, and then he's going to shock in his stomping ground. He's going to float 2 black mana, then use his Garuk to untap those lands that floated the mana, and then he's going to tap the Ancient Tomb and the Mana Crypt and a green source in order to cast Doubling Season. No responses from the board, he's going to use his 2 floating black mana and 3 other lands in order to cast Nicobolus Dragon God. It will resolve, it will enter the battlefield with 8 loyalty counters, he'll minus 8, and everybody who does not control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. Calvin wins the game. So, let's talk about it. The first deck that I want to get out of the way right now, the first player, since we have to go in least impactful to most impactful, is Aiden, is the Ruhan deck. I like the Ruhan deck, I like Ruhan of the Famari, and I think he's going to stay around in our pods. He's very... 
anti-political, linear and anti-political. You can't not help who he's going to swing at. There's nothing you can do. And so the whole strategy is about getting as many boots on the ground, get as many boots onto him as fast as possible, and then just start the inevitability. It's it's fun. It's linear. It's fun. I like it. Um, the scenario that Aiden sort of tricked himself into is when the Relic Seeker connected, he found Sunforger, right? And he was looking at the Sunforger and thinking, I'm going to need a lot of mana in order to really like capitalize on this. So I'm going to need to start playing this Prying Blade and start creating treasure tokens. Which meant that he had to go back on that deal he made with Guy in knocking out the Garouk. Because he did that. Because he ignored the Garouk. And because then Calvin slapped a Smothering Tithe and the cycling player was like, yo, that Smothering Tithe is going to actually fuck me. The game, the game spiraled completely out of control for everyone. That, that was the crucial moment of the game. And me saying that Aiden was the least impactful player is a little weird here. Because if Aiden made a different decision, <laughs> this wouldn't be a game that I thoroughly enjoyed. But, you know, after Aiden went back on that deal, he didn't really do much. He just sort of played more boots. He got his commander a couple times, and that was that. The interaction that was available to deal with his presence was more powerful than the single treasure token he made. I think that was a line that Adrian said in uh, post. I Aiden traded... Uh, knocking out my ability to make two more mana so that he could have plus one mana. Uh, which, by the math. After that, I want to look at the Greven deck. Because Greven also was similarly in a linear position. This is also by design. Greven's really interesting that way. I'm going to play Hall of the Band Lord and Ancient Tomb, and I'm going to lose five life to get out my Greven. But now he has 10 power, and he has haste, and that's really threatening. And it's something I'm always worried about whenever I play against Greven, especially since he's going to inevitably turn them against one of my walkers. But the Greven player ultimately, besides I think a Pyroblast at one point, didn't really interact with the board much as well. And that was mostly the fault of Aiden. Um, because the Garouk stuck around, and that started letting the Planeswalker players just sort of accumulate too much advantage. After that is the cycling deck, is Gavi, and Gavi's always a weird one to play against. I, I was blown away at, I, I think, I forget the card name, but the one that when you cycle it, you can counter a triggered or activated ability. I wasn't prepared for that, not mentally. And it just plays all these weird cards that you don't see anywhere else in the game to do so just crazy shenanigans. That's why the thesis statement was just one of shenanigans because I don't really understand it. And then sometimes, eventually just like, wow, my whole board's picked up um, and you have a lot of like 25 cent cards in play and I'm dead. When did this happen? Uh, but this, this game spiraled out of Adrian's control as well. It didn't help that he might have sequenced his mana wrong earlier. There was a bit of a kersnuffle that you didn't see about red mana, hence the line crying about lack of red mana. But besides that, like, because Aiden did not deal with the Garouk and then Calvin got a Smothering Titan to play, Adrian felt forced to cast the Akroma's Vengeance. But because he cast the Akroma's Vengeance, it actually hurt him as well, and it didn't really hurt the Planeswalker player, because most board wipes don't say Planeswalkers on them. Um, and... Yeah, it all just sort of points back to that one turn where Aiden could have killed the Garouk, but didn't. Aiden, are you listening to this video? <laughs> and then finally, it's the Planeswalker player. What did the Planeswalker player do? I'll tell you what the Planeswalker player did. He kept a three plus three land plus hand because of the Yotanisa, started to get mana screwed, um, and there was an opportunity where the board could have punished him for nothing. He did nothing wrong, but the board could have punished him anyways. And they didn't. They let the Planeswalker player play more Planeswalkers. Um... There was a moment where the Golos player probably, where me, I, don't talk into third person Calvin. There was a moment where I could have cast the Golos instead of the Teferi. Um, and I believe in game commentary, Adrian gave me some shit for that. But at the same time, I like to think the Golos player played smart overall. Uh, he played the Teferi because that lets him untap his lands, which lets him get out a soul shatter to deal with the Greven that was going to happen. Um, and then from there, it's just, Card, card, board wipe, card, eventually into the combo. And that is the combo I've been wanting to do for the longest time, doubling season into Nicobola's Dragon God. Uh, it's very satisfying. And it made that Swords to Plowshare play look all the more smarter. All the more smarter. Me smart, good boy. <laughs> Toast?
by your Nicobolus Dragon God. You play Planeswalkers too. Do you know why Planeswalkers are good? Because two board wipes were cast that game and they stuck. They stuck around. Also, just important lesson for anyone that plays against the Planeswalker deck, if they have a Garuk Wildspeaker out, a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, and an Oko Thief of Crowns, if you make me choose, the Garuk's the best one there. Because there's more coming. And that Garuk's gonna help. I definitely 100% played that Oko for it to die. I definitely 100% played the Teferi for it to die. I was definitely just trying to dig myself out of my mana screw problem. Which meant that Garuk was the best card in my deck at that moment. If you like today's EDH slash Commander gameplay video, leave a comment down below about your your favorite bit. Uh, my favorite bit was when I won. Uh, deck list should be in the description because we, we are good about that now. I promise we're good about that now. At least the Golos deck is in the description. Please give me attention. Uh, this is Hobbs. Hobbs is a good boy. And I hope... I hope to see you next time.